You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Sponsored in part by MB Subculture Comics and Costumes. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that's gotta go fast. I'm Sam. I'm Josh. And I'm Cody, the android sent by Cyberlife. <laughs> Just remember, we are speeding around at the speed of At the of speed sound. of sound, yeah. Hey, thank you all for tuning in. We have a great show for you this week. Uh, but first, let's talk about some things we've been checking out. And before we get into it, we're not giving endgame spoilers. Don't worry, you can listen to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's cool. Let's get that out of the way first. We're, we're not evil. We're not evil. We're not awful. We might talk about it a little bit after the break but not like but total just like base level thoughts no spoilers no deep dive that might be next week might be the week after don't know but you could listen to this one it's cool like i read a couple articles of like of like random dudes getting assaulted because they shouted spoilers to like people standing in line and stuff yeah see that's awful that's that's something awful people do, but also kind of deserved <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, a little bit. No, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, people shouting spoilers at people yeah. while driving by. That's what awful people do. I hate it. Like when I'm like I'm reading through some article that's not related to anything, and then I find like a spoiler like in the comment section. I like, got spoiled for the last thing in the movie by looking at Instagram and a targeted ad for a, a cosplay company had a prop. Of a thing. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Two days before I saw the movie. Oh. But we're not going to get into it. We're oh. going to... We'll talk about it next week. That's it's rough. cool. That's rough. I'm glad I saw it opening night. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. you did the right yeah. thing. Yeah, me you too. You really did. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, who wants to talk about a thing that they've done first? Let's all... Okay, okay. I'll, do, I'll do. Okay, <laughs> I could do it. All right. So, did a few things here and there over the weekend. But the thing I want to talk about this week are a couple of conventions that I had a chance of uh, going to last weekend. That's right. I said a couple. I actually went in almost two opposite directions this past weekend to go to some cons. Uh, one was Rathacon, which is a great name. Yeah. In Athens. You got to give them props for that. Got to give, give them props for that. And the other one was Gojo TechiCon, which was in Ashland. So two not, opposite uh, two opposite ends of Ohio. Not as good of a name. Not as good of a name. And, you know, I... I want to try to stay positive on this show. <laughs> here, here it comes. Here it comes. I, you know, I could sit here and talk about how how bad some of those cons were. I'm going to try not to. Instead, I want to talk about what it takes to put on a successful con. Because both of these cons had something in common. They were both pretty small. They were both really small. The um, Rathacon was in a... Community center was basically an old uh, junior high school yeah, that was converted it, into a. It, the pictures you took, it looked like it a was in a high gym. school gym. It was yeah. in a gym. It was in the same building, but right next to a bunch of uh, open gym workout machine area with people walking in and out using the machines. <laughs> the game rooms were in old school classrooms that were no longer being used. And Gojo Techie Con was uh, in a Holiday Inn. Which you know you have cons in, in yeah. hotels usually. They used to all, the in back in the olden days, that's where they did. That's them. the way they used yeah. to do them. Yeah. So Rathacon, their heart was in the right place, but I think when it comes to running conventions, there's a difference between being a uh, someone who enjoys you know the geeky things, but has a good solid kind of business sense. And like good organizational skills as opposed to someone who's just a fan of cons and want to put on their own. What wants to put on a show? I can listen. We are a small time operation. I can get behind the idea of let's put on a show. We are definitely let's put on a show. <laughs> yeah, I can get behind that. But I'd like to think that we have the organizational skills kind of behind it. It's it kind of adds a little extra little bit of something that, you know, most of this we've gained from just doing it for yeah. so long. <laughs> and, you know, and that's that's a fair point. Rathacon has been doing this for a while, and I'm not sure how they've gotten to skirt by as long as they have. <laughs> I'll give them this. Their social media presence is phenomenal. They uh, marketed this con to look much bigger and better than, than it had turned out to be. But I think what it comes down to is planning. Rathacon 
did not have cohesive planning. They did not spend enough time vetting the different vendors. They put money where they didn't need to when it came to guests. Didn't put enough money in other places like everything else. <laughs> like a lot of their vendors were like looked like garage sales mm. in the con. Which I mean, I can get behind like a lot, having a, a merch area. I, mean, I guess we, we've had a few. We went. We've been even uh, Wizard World Con has like a couple vendors that pretty much look, look like they're selling stuff out of their garage. Right, but when the entire con is either that or people who are selling their art, which is just doodles on a sketch paper mm. and with a ten dollar sign slapped on it, it's not quite going to a flea market is fun when it's called a flea market. Yes. Exactly. And <laughs> they they did not lay out the con very well. It was very difficult to get around the con because nothing made sense. There wasn't like a distinct artist area. There wasn't like a guest area. Oh, wow. Everyone was just kind of thrown on a table. You show up, put your thing on a table and hope for the best. Mm. Uh, there were a couple of uh, vendors that just flat didn't show up. So instead of like, you know, offering the other vendors, oh, yeah, if you give us an extra five, ten bucks, we can scoot you down and give you a little extra room. There were just wide open tables <laughs> in various spots throughout the thing. The guests were put right up at the very front of the con. So there's big crowds in the front instead of the back. Worse, oh. there were zero crowds in, in the front because nobody was stopping at the guests. Uh, there was one guy who has written for, I can't, I, the name escapes me, but he's written um, some books for Marvel and DC. I think he's a local guy. I think he's from Ohio. Sat Was sitting there on his phone, slumped back because no one was coming to talk to him. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> we got there around the time of the uh, costume contest. And I'm glad we didn't dress up because if you notice, there's no pictures on our Instagram. It's because the costume thing was almost non-existent save for gojo techie con there were there no one was really dressed up which is fine i mean you get that with smaller cons whatever but they planned out like this big huge long thing with the costume contest where people getting on stage and doing a character and all this it was bad <laughs> you know no, it's, that's kind of a con staple it's though. kind of a you con do, your, do skits and stuff which but there's a difference between Okay, you have someone, say, with like a timer or something going, okay, 30 seconds, got to move them through. There are people just doing whole episodes of bits. Yeah. Oh. And that was that was a bit rough. It, it comes down to planning. And for the price, I mean, they were only charging 10 bucks to get in. And oh, it was a one-day con. Yeah. That's, that's not much, but honestly, should have been less. They would have gotten way more of a crowd for the con that they put on. They would have said, okay, five bucks. They had a whole big booth trying to sell T-shirts with the Rathacon logo on them. They sunk way too much money into that. Like that's where like ninety percent of their mm. their take went into, and no one was buying them. Aww. Like part of me felt kind of bad. Part of me was like, "Come on, <laughs> you could do better. You could do better than this." I have a very important question. Sure. When you walked on the floor, did it make that wooden creaky oh, noise that gym yes. floors do? Oh, okay. sure it did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a nostalgic sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the uh, the door they did, it, it took it took us, because we paid, paid with card, uh, and they were set up to do the square or whatever. Good. It, took, nobody... it took them almost a half hour to get it figured out. Oh, wow. Okay. But they, they eventually did... did it, and that kind of, <laughs> that kind of like... Set the tone <laughs> for the afternoon. You could walk the entire con in 20 minutes and see everything and be done. And I know this because that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, on the flip side, uh, Gojo Techie Con. It, was, it is an anime con, so you know, you, you know what you're expecting. I couldn't tell by the name. Yeah. 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 I mean, and you know, there are certain expectations that you go into when you go to a, an... Anime con. Anime con. Even the bigger ones like Ohio Con, Colossal Con. Matsuri Con. Matsuri Con, yeah. They there's a certain level, there's a certain certain kind of things that you kinda expect with those kind of cons. Different kind of crowd, that sort of thing. Weebs and furries. But, mm -hmm. You can go ahead and cut that. No, it's fine. It's staying in. Uh, <laughs> you, you said it. You have because to you're correct. It. You're absolutely correct. But at least with this con, they had it was smaller. It was smaller than Rathacon. But, however, the way they had the dealer's room set up, the way they had the, the check-in area set up, the way they had the panel area set up, they had uh, your Amped Guard people mm -hmm. there. 
it was kind of weirdly run, but I'm guessing it's a different chapter, so I'm not putting that on you guys. I don't I don't know I don't know everybody from that area. Ah. I know a couple of the people, mm-hmm. but I had contemplated going up there. But I, I didn't go. Yeah, <laughs> but you've only met them on the field of combat. I'm assuming <laughs> most most of them, yes, yeah. because yes. because they play up in Medina, and that is that's a drive. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But like, just a little extra bit of planning and a little bit extra of like someone who's you know gone to cons, but are like, okay, I know basic organizational skills made a world of difference. Now, would I go back to either one of these cons? It's debatable, <laughs> but I can say that I had a better time at Gojo TechiCon, which was a smaller con. And it's anime, and you don't and even anime, really like and anime. I don't, and I don't really like anime, but I had a better time at that con, and it was run better than Rathacon, which, okay, and, and the, the other, this is the last thing, I'm, I'm really rambling because I'm <laughs> having a hard time, because they're, the, the memories of these cons are, are quickly escaping my brain. They're like <laughs> rocketing out of my, out of my memories. They're getting pushed up by Avengers. But one thing about, about Rathacon and like, I, like I mentioned before, their social media is like really on point. They, they seem like they're a much bigger con than they are. And the way it turns out, part of that is because they set up a booth at other conventions advertising their con. So they just happen to get a bunch of pictures at other con. with a giant Rathacon sign and a bunch of cosplayers in a much larger, say, Wizard World sized convention. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. There's 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 a term for this. There's a term for this. Fake it till you make it. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly it. And you know what? They get all the props for me for that. They got me. They got that hustle. They got me. <laughs> but uh yeah, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I had fun at Rathacon as well, but it was more of that ironic kind of like, oh my, can you believe... Like, like, like you walk through the door and you're like, oh... Can you... Well, we're going to talk about the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer <laughs> later on, and I believe it elicited some of the some similar feelings <laughs> to going to Rathacon, which is a, a, kind of an ironic kind of um, uh, humor and enjoyment out of it. But yeah, no, that that's been my major thing. Uh, a, a couple of <laughs> a couple of tiny cons with uh, of uh, varying degrees of. But hey, uh, you're supporting yes. local convention Co- culture. Uh, yes, supporting local people, putting on a show. I I love that because that's us too. We're putting on a show. We're gonna we're gonna rub our hands together and try to squeeze pennies until it turns into dimes and just like do do the thing. Do the thing. Just do it. Yeah, but there's a difference between being a fan of just being a fan of conventions and being someone know how who to run one can run yeah. and can manage people. What were the were there any good guests at either one or there were no guests at Gojo TechiCon? Huh. But they had well, no, I take that back. Professor Shy Guy, the uh nerdcore rapper, okay. was there. And to be totally honest, be totally transparent, we went to Gojo TechiCon on a Sunday because Rathacon was only on a Saturday. There was a lot more going on at Goju TechiCon on Saturday, so it could have been even bigger. We basically caught everyone at 11 o'clock in the morning. On that convention burnout. Yeah, on oh, convention yeah. burnout. So That's and, when you get the deals in the dealers. And that's when you, yeah, well, yeah. And so even at that, had more fun at Goju TechiCon. Was a more successful time there. But yeah, that's it. That's that's <laughs> me. That's what I did. You well, checked some stuff out. Yeah. I I. Put some miles on the car, and I checked out some things to Good, various it's success. Because it's a new car. It's a new car. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I played a couple games recently you don't of say. this week. Yeah, sure. Um, one of them is a point-and-click adventure game called uh, Whispers of a Machine. That uh, actually, I won a copy on Twitter. Oh, nice. There uh, some publication I whose name escapes me. <laughs> who's a, a smaller type, you know, news the, site putting on a show type. Yeah. Yeah had a retweet contest and I was one out of 13 that retweeted it. <laughs> nice. So I, I got a free copy and you know what? I would have bought it anyway. Yeah. Cause it's definitely my type of game. Okay. You, you, cool. do, you do love those point and clicks. I do. Uh, this one is about, it's like uh, in a not quite post apocalyptic future, but a future where bad stuff has happened and society has outlawed like higher technology. Mm, okay. And, like, AI is, like, completely, totally illegal. Don't even think about it. And you play as a cyberpunk augmented detective who has to solve some murders. Um, and it's, it's But it sounds like his whole his whole purpose is, out, is illegal, though. Her. 
Uh, well, no, because she doesn't have AI. It's just augmentation. Yeah, but you that... said higher technology, though. True. Well, this is the government, dude. She works for the government, uh... so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have some technology, just not super advanced. There's a certain level that is illegal. Ah, okay. Because of some cataclysmic event that happened in the past. Mm. But anyway, it's a, it's a point and click adventure game where you go around, you ask people questions, you use items on other items. But she also has those augments that she got from, I don't, I don't want to explain it too much because I don't want to get in the weeds and be boring. But she has <laughs> augments that evolve and you get new ones based on the way you interact with people. So oh, okay, cool. So if you're aggress- more aggressive, you get more aggressive powers. Mm-hmm. If you're more diplomatic Empa- yeah diplomatic or empathetic then you unlock another set okay so all right that's cool and you use these powers in different ways to solve puzzles like she has a super strength one you can click and you get super strength for like 30 seconds to interact with things i got electrical powers so i can shoot electricity into something or like or ener- someone energize the person <laughs> yeah it doesn't shock them it just kind of Fills them with energy. Okay. You can read people's biometric Mm. information from a distance so you can get if they're like anxious or relaxed when you're having conversations. Mm. I could use some of that good, good energy right now. (laughs) (laughs) But it's it's a really good, good story. Uh, Good puzzles. Okay. Um, Just high quality point and click with an interesting mechanics. Hmm. Awesome. All right. So that's Whispers of a Machine by Clifftop Games. And that sounds kind of kind of like how I play uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I pump all the stuff in, like, the talking. Is that a new game, or is that's that an a... Old game. That's an old game. I was going to say, there because... There is a new one coming. Okay, because uh, I was wondering, because there's a Twitch streamer that I follow that has been playing the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Oh, yeah? It's the, yeah. I love that game so much. There are two Vampire the Masquerade video games. One's very Diablo-esque, and mm-hmm. then there's Bloodlines, which is more of, like, first-person RPG. Yes, yeah. They're both pretty good. I've heard this, oh, yeah. the new one you play, like, a week blood or something like that it's like a 14th generation vampire that like gets all the weaknesses and none of the strengths yeah that's kind of a thing in the in the role-playing game but then as you eat people you like get their powers or something yeah i don't know man i i think i still have a physical copy of bloodline somewhere that game is good we should we should uh stream that one oh man yeah we should i I should go dig it out (laughs) yeah you should do that yeah anyway sorry i didn't mean to hijack your check it out (laughs) what was your other game you checked out the other one's Super Blood Hockey on the Switch, which is... Super Blood Hockey. Which is pretty much NES ice hockey. Okay. But uh, violent, and it has a really cool franchise mode where you like micromanage your oh. players. and Oh, nice. Okay. And, and what they do huh. when they're not playing. So you can tell them to like go lift weights, go... Go run on the treadmill, go take a shower. Go murder some people. Well, you can't tell them to do that, but... <laughs> But it, it's it's just it's NES ice hockey, which is a, inherently a good game mm-hmm. with added violence, <laughs> which is fun. And you can you can get into like full brawls on the ice, like entire oh, nice. team fighting each other. And then if you lose, like one of your players will get hurt or die. Oh, <laughs> uh, which I've had I've had a guy die, and then you have to go buy a new one. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're all prisoners. Oh, oh okay. So, oh, so it's huh. like a like a Running Man kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Cool, cool. And like you can go out in the back alley behind your training center, and if one of your guys dies, he's just, the corpse is just in a dumpster back there. Oh my oh, god! Wow. Do you remember? Do you remember that basketball game that was on the NES where you could punch people? Arch Rivals. I love that game. Is that what it was called? Yeah, this is very much Arch Rivals, but hockey. Nice. Because I remember like going across the court, like holding the button with my yeah, fist so like you have your fist cock back (laughs) (laughs) just punch people and take the ball but it's it's a fun game it's really hard to score a goal kind of like actual hockey because the goalies never miss a block oh so you have to really like angle it so the the goalie moves away and then you do a pass and try to get it past him Mm -hmm. like you don't get high scoring games usually i think the most i've gotten is like four in one game well that's i mean that's hockey hockey. that's hockey it has a or soccer Weird amount of realism in that aspect, <laughs> but uh, it, it's really fun, and I like like sports games that have some kind of weird like like NFL Blitz, yeah, yeah, or NBA Jam. Mm-hmm. This is very much like those, but hockey, and it, it's only like ten bucks, mm. so it's it's worth picking up. I remember, I remember when NASCAR put out a weird Mario Kart esque racing game. That sounds awful. It was it was kind of weird, but it was like <laughs> it wasn't like on like a 
like a NASCAR track. You had like different courses you could do and you could unlock some really weird vehicles like there's like a winnebago and some stuff to why drive. why am i picturing like a, a tiny dale jr with a huge head sitting like on a on a racer like mario kart <laughs> yeah that's what i'm seeing i know that's yeah, not what it that's, is yeah same, that's same what same i'm here. seeing yeah <laughs> sorry my brain just went to a really dark place. yeah i know i know it did i know it did let's talk about she Yes. Because I, I know you watch she and yes. I've watched most of she I've watched the whole seven episodes of this new season of she Apparently more coming, I've heard. Good. Because <laughs> there, there was a few filler episodes in this one. Oh, but the one of the filler ones was the best one. There's one where they all sit around. The D&D and, episode? Yeah, and battle plan, but they're actually just playing D&D. Yeah. Well, kind of. Adora is trying to plan the battle and then like other people are coming and goes i have a plus five of blah 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 it, it the the metaphor is is very obvious on purpose it, oh they're yeah they're playing D. i mean the mm-hmm. fact that adora has like a folded screen in front of her yeah <laughs> tiny bow no and it changes animation styles when you go into different characters and imaginations of oh, what's nice. going on so. nice which one has the classic that's bow Bo. oh that's bow all right Be- yeah Everyone is wearing their classic outfits. Yeah. Well, because it's a man interpreting the world of She-Ra, oh, yeah. just like that, the original series that is, makes was sense. made by men. Okay, yeah. Nope, At least that that's how I sense. read it. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> but when yeah. Bo pictured himself, he still looked like himself, except he had the classic outfit and the stupid mustache. Yeah, the mustache. He had the mustache. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Catra was just doing cat puns the whole time. Much like she did Much in the like actual show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Glimmers was this fantastic, like, hard boiled anime look, like, out of, of some kind of, of like cowboy bebop style. <laughs> sort of, but it also kind of looked like mm, it had like oh, a lot of sharp colors and yeah. a lot of solid black spaces. But like a lot of like anime esque jumping around and yeah. whatnot. It was, very, like, it was very cool. And she said there, and then I teleport here and do a kick here and goes, You were out of teleports twelve teleports ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the rest of the uh, the season? It's not bad. It's a lot of like Shira or well Adora trying to master the other aspects of her Shira powers. Mm. Like the sword itself can change into a bunch of different things. Yeah, and she doesn't have great control over it. It no. tur- turns into like a pitcher or a coffee mug or like Oh nice. Okay. Yeah, she ends up like punching somebody like when it turns into a coffee mug, she goes, fine, and just punches somebody with the mug. Yeah. And her developing her bond with Swift Swift Wind, her flying Oh the flying unicorn unicorn Pegas- horse Pegasus. Thing. It yeah. was actually hilarious. They wrote him so funny. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. He's just like... That's right. He talks, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 But he's not like an annoying talking animal. Yeah. But he's he's very gung-ho and... He's all about being She-Ra's mighty steed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> and at the, at the same time, though, they're developing relationships with even the villain's characters. Like, that's that's what this show does so good is the interpersonal relationships between characters are so well thought out for like almost every character in the show. <laughs> Even the bad guys and good guys have like, well, this is how Seahawk interacts with Scorpia, who are on two different sides. But turn out they have it turns out they have a lot in common type hmm. of. OK, when Seahawk s- sings his sad shanty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seahawk's my favorite character by far. He's the the pirate mustached pirate. <laughs> I, he is pretty good. I feel bad for for Kyle though. Oh yeah, he's the one of the bad guys they constantly pick on. He's just like the the butt monkey of the crew. Oh yeah, he's always messing up or or yeah. stuff or they're just blaming stuff on him. Yeah, I, I keep waiting for him just to to defect. <laughs> like you kind of get that idea, like an, almost an idea of that, like. In the last season, when he's talking to Bo in the prison cell, and he's I, like, "I don't even know why I'm talking to you. Like, I'm not supposed to talk to you." About this. <laughs> I kept hoping Scorpio was going to defect because she's not a bad person, but she's on the bad side. <laughs> yeah, like she's technically a princess, but the, when the horde came to this planet, they landed in her backyard and took over her kingdom. Or like the characters gotcha. have this kind of depth and you totally wouldn't expect it out of what is ostensibly a Netflix animated show for little girls. Yeah. <laughs> um I mean a lot of that comes back to Noel Stevenson and, and the writers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, yeah. there there's a lot of like I don't want to say world building but like kind of some backstory level stuff. 
this is the kind of show where the, the, the meat is the interpersonal stuff and you can pepper in world building in with that yeah. to kind of like a big thing for Adora yeah. is she doesn't want to be like the last Shira. Right. Who messed up big time. Who messed up big time <laughs> and oh, basically gotcha. almost destroyed the world mm. and broke pretty much everything that makes the high tech first ones work. Ah, gotcha. But then you got like, uh, there's a whole episode that is, a uh, the whole episode is a flashback to uh, Shadow Weaver before she was evil. Uh, when she was called Light Spinner and she worked for, and she lived with the, the Mages Guild and you see Glimmer's dad as a kid and all kinds of stuff like that. That's who that was. Yeah, that was Glimmer's dad. Oh, we're getting mm-hmm. really into the weeds yeah, here. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, sorry. I'm, I've gone cross-eyed. I don't <laughs> know what... Oh, did you get to the, the episode, the very bow-centric episode? No, that must be the last one. Is it? Oh, man, I don't know. Well... I don't want to spoil yeah, it. Yeah, don't spoil it because I don't remember what you're talking about. But I do want to say like, I want to say it's surprising how good this show is, but it's not. It's not. Because I know Noel Stevenson's other work, and it's all really fantastic. Good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but you might be surprised if you're not aware of her past work at how much depth and how good a show about She-Ra, a toy commercial from the 80s, mm-hmm. is. Well, she did uh, Lumberjanes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's excellent as well. That comic. Yeah. Yeah. And the art style and everything is she just She used top-notch. to do Lumberjanes. She oh, yeah. Do she doesn't do it anymore. Do it anymore. Yeah. And Nimona was her first big thing, and that's also very good and mm-hmm. seemed to be a movie. Oh, really? Didn't know that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I got picked up, I think, by DreamWorks. <laughs> nice. Right on. Right on. All right. Well, hey, I uh, hate to cut you guys off, but uh, we got to go ahead and take a break here. And when we get back, we'll get into some uh, news. News. Nerd Overload is sponsored in part by MB Subculture Comics and Costumes. MB Subculture is the one-stop shop for all your geeky needs, from comics and collectibles to unique custom costumes, masks, makeup, and more. MB Subculture is located at 122 West Rensselaer Street in downtown Bucyrus, 567-806-5364, and online at subcultureoh.com. Hey, we're back. That was City Escape by the Ska Tune Network. It's a YouTube channel that covers different songs and the ska. ska versions of them. Yeah. And they have a fabulous logo that I love that's mm-hmm. the Cartoon Network logo. Yeah, which, that was really good. That's it, really cool. It's, it's clever on a couple levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, it's a really good cover. And we played that because we're going to talk about <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Or a, a and that's what this bad song cover is from. of Sonic the A bad cover of Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, uh, this past week, we had a couple of things pop up. First up, we had a leaked, and leaked in quotes, because I don't think it was actually leaked, but a leaked photo of what Jim Carrey was going to look like as the villain of the Sonic the Hedgehog live-action movie, uh, Dr. Robotnik, and... It looked fine. It looked fine. It wasn't great, but it looked fine. He had hair. His mustache wasn't crazy, but, you know, whatever. It's Jim Carrey. Following day, we get our first trailer of this this thing. I think I described it as a parade of horrors. Yeah, that's what that's what you called it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this movie it stars uh Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> uh is it James Marsden? Yeah. Yeah, the as Cyclops. The Cyclops yeah. from uh, the X-Men also, movies. Ben Schwartz is the voice of Sonic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Which and... in and of itself is not bad casting no, he's, at all. No, it's a good casting voice-wise. <laughs> but I think and it looks, save for one really bad part, <laughs> bad thing, it looks like a pretty kind of stock standard movie adaptation of a video game where they get kind of close. Like they, they they get like the broad strokes of characters kind of, but they don't. They miss the mark. Yeah, well, it's like somebody described Sonic the Hedgehog to somebody who's never seen him before, and then exactly. they made a movie about it. Exactly. <laughs> the pro- the biggest, gl- most glaring problem with this is the way Sonic looks and moves and acts. It's horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> his, his mouth full of human teeth. He has a mouth full of human teeth, and it's terrible. He doesn't wear gloves. He has creepy white hands with fingernails. Yeah. His body is just just human proportioned enough to make it just un unsettling. From a distance, it looks like a small man in a blue jumpsuit with a big head. With a big head. With a, yeah. Uh, you know, I've said <laughs> it, Yeah, I said it before. Every time we've talked about this movie, I'll mm-hmm. say it again. 
Sonic the Hedgehog's character design was already pretty much perfect. It's what he's written on for all 25 years of his existence. Sonic's a cartoon. Yeah. Son- There's no reason why Sonic shouldn't be a cartoon in this. Make it like a, a Roger Rabbit situation where he's he's an alien from another planet. He doesn't have to look like a tiny child. Yeah, <laughs> blue child. Tiny blue human. Yeah. It's, I mean, if they can make Pikachu look good, how can they can't make Sonic look good? That see, that's the thing. The people have been comparing the Sonic to the Pikachu and wondering, okay, why does Detective Pikachu and their hyper realistic versions of Pokemon work, and why does Sonic, why why Sonic doesn't? And I think the answer is the Pokemon movie, the Pikachu movie, leans it's high, it's hyper realistic but it leans into the weird shapes and the weird designs that the pokemon are where sonic is like hey we're going to take a, a a tiny human and put a bunch of blue hair on him and and make it almost human ish it's weird you know he'd probably even look better if he just had gloves yeah yeah and there's no reason why he couldn't have no just wa- had gloves yeah. he has shoes why can't he have gloves doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Like I could get past the fact that his arms are blue and whatnot, but his, 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 oh, that's the least of our worries. I know his mouth and his hands—they just bother me so much. His eyes aren't right. His I, eyes look weird. I think a lot of it comes down to the Pokemon Company is actually involved in the mm-hmm. Detective Pikachu movie, whereas Sega just kind of sold the rights to Paramount and, and said, "Hey, said, do whatever." You know, because I think they've said they are not happy with how Sonic looks in this movie. I wouldn't. I don't doubt it. <laughs> oh man, that tagline in the trailer though: "Every hero has a genesis," <sighs> which only makes sense here in North America. Yeah, because everywhere else in the world, it's, it's a, called the Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah, every hero has a Mega, Mega Drive, drive. Uh. in their closet, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like I get it. It's the beginning but yeah. it's like i mean it's kind of clever <laughs> I, it's but at the same time the kinda. genesis wasn't even the sega's first console it was the first one with sonic on it it was it was the first one with sonic although on there is a master system there is version a master of sonic. System version. is there yeah. yes oh yeah it's really different and weird but still kind of good <laughs> yeah huh so what did we think of jim carrey in this because we actually got to see him move around and and I thought yeah. it was bog standard Jim Carrey stuff that wasn't inherently bad, but also wasn't funny. Wasn't revolutionary. Wasn't <laughs> yeah. doing anything new. It's, it's, it's definitely '90s Jim Carrey. Kid friendly Ace Ventura, kind of. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but not as wacky as say like The Mask was. Yeah, yeah. It has a weird pervert mustache too. <laughs> but so does Robotnik. <laughs> but, so does Robotnik, but and at the very end of the trailer, we get a shot of Jim Carrey looking like Robotnik. He has the bald head and the crazy flared huge out huge mustache, yeah, mustache. and that's better. It's in a red, in a red coat, actually, and that's yeah. better. the The mustache that Jim Carrey has through the mo- the majority of this trailer, it's like really tame and also well, just it, ch- real... it changes though. Between, yeah, it does yeah, kind of change between, between a couple different scenes. It changes. I, I think what we're seeing is Sonic slowly driving him insane. Yeah. Yes, and I think that final that final scene is Jim Carrey on the world where Sonic comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Because that that background did not look like the real like it was not photorealistic. It was what well, was Mushroom Hill Zone. It, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> probably Mish, Mushroom Hill Zone. But yeah. So do we think we're going to see any other? Sonic, uh, characters. Sonic characters in this, even as like post credit sort of thing. Are we going to get tails at the end? I think if they were smart, they would, but they've shown very much that they aren't. Yeah. So, I mean, they had the bright idea to lead with their big funny joke being about child kidnapping in the trailer for this children's film. Yeah. And the <laughs> fact that that character is a cop and he would know not to say something stupid like that. <laughs> but to be fair, it's James Marsden. He's a dumb cop. <laughs> This part was originally written for Chris Pratt. If you do, you remember? Did yeah. you ever yeah. see any of the, yep. the promotional posters that they that they I like? I remember. Yeah, you know, I could see it working a lot better with Chris Pratt. Yeah, mm-hmm. but even then, you know, maybe don't. If your funniest material is about child kidnapping in a family film, what the like? What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, okay, so we know Sonic and Robotnik are going to have like a, a Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner type relationship. Well, duh. How is Jim Carrey going to interact as Robotnik interact with human characters that are normal? 
like J- nothing about James Barnes's character tells me that he is anything outside of I'm a cop, I'm kind of dumb, <laughs> and wacky Jim Carrey and super straight man like human characters don't enter. It's not going to work right. It's not. I don't. I, I just don't know that, how this. Also, the fact that it seems like they're trying to tote his character as he is literally the smartest man in the room, but nobody likes him. Yeah, I think this movie it's it's like it's trying to do tell two separate stories. Like they could have had like Sonic's an alien from another planet and needs to get back, or Sonic's being chased by Doctor Robotnik. Like it seems like the two stories are kind of like butting up against each other, and is it's it, not going to mesh just well. Me or is this movie more than a little familiar to Howard the Duck? It's almost exactly Howard the Duck. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being Howard the Duck beat for beat only instead of what's his name turning into a weird uh, stop motion monster at the end. It's just Dr. Robotnik with a robot. Well, I think everything he has is a robot because if you look at all the cars and vehicles that are chasing Sonic, they're all black with a singular red Cylon-esque and eye. And they have really good designs, Because actually. they look like the Dr. Robotnik's yeah. robots from the comic. They, they're actually with the dome head and stuff. That's cool. Really good looking robots. Yeah. I think I, somebody on Twitter said it looks like somebody wanted to make a Dr. Robotnik movie, but could only sell it if they put Sonic in it. That's that <laughs> actually that tracks. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like this is less an origin for Sonic and more an origin for Robotnik. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're going to get precious little about Sonic and hit the hit Mobius the play, or if, if they even call it Mobius. Like, I don't know how much they're going to get into with that. And then, okay, we got to talk about the rings. Will will he eat beans? Will Robotnik eat beans? Will Sonic eat eat chili dogs? Chili dogs. (laughs) One would hope. I would, I, there's, it's got to be there. At least a scene. I can't believe they made him say gotta go fast in the trailer. Yeah. Like, I hope, the only thing I can hope for in this film is that they lean heavy into the memes. The Sonic memes? Because at least... (laughs) Because then at least it will be ironically funny. It worked for the Sonic Twitter account. It, yeah, that's it. Really, it really did. That's exactly right. But as bad as this movie looks, I'm still gonna see it, and I'll tell you why. I love bad movies. You guys know this. Oh yeah, and um, this looks like primo bad movie this material. Lo- this looks like a plus, like Chef Kiss, like yeah, perfect, <laughs> like candidate for like so bad it's good laugh at it for completely wrong reasons because they obviously tried they just made the wrong decisions over and over and that's the that's when bad movies are the best (laughs) is when if you if you go into a bad movie going okay i'm gonna make this if you if you sharknado it and you're like i'm going to purposely make a bad movie it's not that funny but if you go into it going this is going to be great this is going to start an entire franchise oh my god every child is going to have a sonic the hedgehog t-shirt and hat and lunchbox or whatever shoes asthma inhaler yeah (laughs) and it turns out bad that's that's the gold standard that's that's when it that's when it really works if if, if it's at least like kind of on the level of like michael bay produced ninja turtles 2 yes and now michael bay produces ninja Ninja turtles Turtles 1 Mm -hmm. yep i i've said it off air but uh street fighter the mm-hmm, movie mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with Jean-Claude Van Damme and Raul Julia. Like, that is primo. Cheese. Like, oh, yeah. That's high-grade cheese. High-grade. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, it has like it has elements where it's like, it looks like Street Fighter, and then it just goes the dumb again. Yeah, if you, if you, squ- if you squint and turn your head sideways, it kind of looks like Street Fighter. Which, is, that's what the Sonic is. If you squint and turn your head sideways, he almost looks like Sonic the Hedgehog. See, exactly. I mean, I mean exactly. That's they why had I'm... the right sound effects. Yeah. yeah. When he rolls into a ball, it looks fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you're not looking at his weird, creepy, tiny man body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, you want to talk about the ring. Yeah, let's talk about the ring, because that seems to be kind of a thing. I, I really didn't I think, think it was maybe be... we just made it a thing in, in some Facebook comments. Okay, well then we can probably skip it then. I can no, because I I've got things to say about oh, it. Yeah, let's talk it's about weird. it. Then. Yeah, there's a scene in the trailer where Sonic throws a ring, and it's a portal that James Marston and whoever the female lead, char- lead is, they who they've not told us about at all. Sally Acorn. <laughs> what if her name's Amy? It could be. It uh, could be. Yeah. <laughs> But he throws a ring and it makes a portal that they go through, which I get that it's a reference to the bonus stage rings that appear at the end of a stage. 
Mm -hmm. But it's not like that's something that Sonic does. Yeah. <laughs> and and like I said off off mic, I think the only thing that I could put in the like the plus column to that is they had to get the rings in there somewhere and they couldn't just make it something that Sonic would collect so when he gets hit he doesn't immediately die. They had to give the rings something to do. What if Sonic tries to buy something with a fistful of rings? That would be too funny for them to actually put in this film. That would be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean if they if they if they Pay did me. something yeah. yeah. If they well, did something similar to that. That's the thing. We could have made a better Sonic movie than this because we are aware of what the franchise is and what makes it good and what makes it work. And we also have a pretty good idea of what works in like, you know, we've seen enough films. We kind of know yeah. <laughs> it, it It goes back to the, the con thing at the beginning of the, you see, I told you I was going to all loop back around. There's <laughs> loop de loop back around. Yeah. There's like being <laughs> That's nice. a Shira reference. Oh, no, oh, really? actually, okay, no, wait. actually oh. it was the Sonic reference. Cause he's always running in there. Yeah, all right. he does. He always Sorry, does you said loop de loop and I just, I, I was picturing Swift Wind doing, but it's the loop de loops. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> hey, it works on d several levels. It does. It does. But like, this is almost like the opposite problem as like uh, the cons that I went to over the weekend. Like you have people who make movies, but have no love for any of the IPs. IPs. So they do it bad where the cons have a love for the thing, but don't know how to do it. So they do it bad. Yeah. It's, so you got to have the nice medium ground in there. It's where superhero movies were in the 2000s, where yeah. they were like embarrassed of their origin, so they would change a bunch of stuff for weird reasons. Blade. Yeah. Blade is barely, I mean, it's not a comic book movie. It's just a character that they used. The first X-Men movie is kind of that just way. Just barely. Yeah, yeah, it's just barely a superhero film. Yeah. Let's put them all in leather jumpsuits for some cuz we're reason. embarrassed of all the costumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, because bright colors are scary cuz yeah. people still love the Matrix at yeah. that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so hey, I think we've dogged on the Sonic trailer enough. We're going to revisit this like every trailer and every time there is news, I have a I just have a feeling cuz <laughs> it's it's one of those per it's like an evergreen news topic yeah. at this point. This I is think. our Fallout 76. Yeah. Or this is our Batman v Superman. Or kind of our anthem a little bit. We had a couple weeks there. We had anthem. I've heard it's got a lot, gotten a lot better recently, but I, I haven't played it. Also, was it Anthem where the developers kind of put out a like a big press release thing and they alluded to it being rolled back into like permanent alpha? Or something like that. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, it's a pretty recent thing, but I for, for some reason it like referred to it as like an alpha build of a game that's been out for a while. <laughs> they, and they like, did push back a bunch of. There's supposed to be a big event that happens that changes a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but they pushed it back to further fix what isn't working. Yeah, which was the right move. It's the right move, but if you call your game an alpha, then you just had a bunch of people buy their pay full price for a game that's that, not done that w they claimed was done and then rolled back i said oh wait no never mind hey, people Fortnite? love buying people love buying games that aren't done look at PUBG. look at everything <laughs> yeah. yeah Fortnite still says beta like has a beta <laughs> banner on the on the loading screens power rangers battle for the grid it says beta on it it's oh. not finished nothing works <laughs> and there are characters that are not in the game Oh, though, speaking of developers, though, this isn't on the board, but do you see where Riot, a bunch of Riot Games employees are going to do a walkout? Yeah, Good. I heard something about that. Good. I've heard nothing but terrible things about Riot Games. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like the big thing. Uh, Riot being the people who make League of Legends. Which I've heard is much more easy to play because all of the angry turds that are toxic and ruin the community left to go play Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but I guess there was like problems where employees were fired or threatened to sue for discrimination and things like that, like different awful things that happened at the Riot Studios. Yeah, I heard something about all of and this. And so yeah. some employees said they were going to sue and then Riot issued like a like a counter thing saying that you couldn't sue for X, Y, or Z reasons. So a bunch of people are planning a walkout. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. You need we need to start holding like these game companies accountable because especially for the way they treat their workers. Yeah. I've, I've heard nothing but horror stories about the triple A game industry and the people who work testing. On... Testing is horrifying from what I understand. 
But it's always been kind even, of bad. Even development is horrifying. Yeah. They, they make people work way too long. They All have the this, crunch. Yeah, you know. they have this culture where if you're not working crunch and you're not putting in 18-hour hours. days or whatever, yeah. you are not contributing, which is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Or like Rockstar. Mm-hmm. This... This issue comes up every six months. It does. And nobody does anything to fix it, and it's absurd. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, yeah, look at Rockstar. Uh, when the one branch of Rockstar made uh, the L.A. Noir. Red Dead. Well, no, well oh, yeah. Oh, L.A. Noir. Yeah, yeah, L.A. Noir. They broke all kinds of Australian labor laws mm-hmm. to finish the, whole, the game. The whole company's gone now. The, it was Team Bondi started the game, and then Rockstar had to kind of finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the Rockstar, when Rockstar... Uh, was it Rockstar Montreal that made Red Dead? I don't remember now. All of Rockstar ended up working on it at some point. <laughs> yeah, but the, it was so bad, the fact that the developers snuck in little sly you know, pot shots at the company in the game, uh, talking about their working conditions. Yeah, there's some weapon descriptions that like straight up... Yeah, take. the first, the, the Cattleman Revolver has a little line in it. I, yeah, it's... It's garbage. I make games myself and have no interest in working in the tip, AAA industry because of how bad it sounds. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's it's almost like it's almost like the publishers now have like this this culture now where things have to things have to come out like right now instead of working on something long enough towards a good product. It's always about the crunch. It's always about yeah finishing things as quickly as possible to move on to the next thing because you don't know when the game industry is going to boom or is it's going to boom or bust you don't know so you always got to be working on the next thing boom 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 games are so expensive now that when you work forever on something and then it doesn't work yeah it needs started over they don't do that because they've already put this much money in x amount of millions of dollars into it like fallout 76 or anthem where they have to release a game that is not complete or is so broken that you can barely play it because you've put so much money into it already anthem had a very very troubled development where directors were leaving and mm-hmm. coming back and people and people with the vision were gone and then they come back and like at least it has some sort of excuse <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you if you want to uh, get it really dig into that, there's a YouTuber. His name is Matt McMuscles, is what he goes by. But he does a a, a series. One of the things, what happened? What happened? It's yeah, a very he, good se- it, series. I, I love watching them. There, it, what he does is he um, g- picks games that either didn't get released or had really really troubled development cycles, and does a really cool, kind of funny deep dive into exactly what happened. Well, what happened? What happened? Yeah, and <laughs> and uh, the one he did on Anthem is it's like really eye opening. It, it it really is. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. There's another YouTuber I've checked out that does a similar thing called Death of a Game. Mm, okay, and he talks about various games, like especially MMOs and things like that, that either like rose and popped or never came out. You know, he does a bunch of games. Like he did um uh, oh god, what was that one MMO you and me started playing? For a hot minute there for a second. Oh wow! With the really Arch Age. Al- yeah, Arc Age. Or Arc Age. Uh, yeah, he talks. Is that about- the one with the dinosaurs? No, that's no. Arc. That's Arc. Okay. No, this one was a Korean yeah. uh, MMO title. Mm, okay. Um, it had a lot of really interesting ideas. Yeah, but his video really talks about its development. I don't have to watch that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he talked about a MOBA that I was in the testing phase for, for called Gigantic. I remember you being yeah, part of I that. I remember that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I really liked it, but then it never came out. And it had like this whole hit. And he talks about this whole history of the development of the games and like mm-hmm. everything. It's really in depth stuff. But death of a game. I highly. He's got a whole, a whole series. Check it out. Cool. Some of the games he talks about may not be dead, but their community is definitely very small now. Mm. Anthem, though, is definitely something that either should have just been restarted or canceled. Oh, restarted from the ground up. Yeah. They should have just, yeah, sc- taken but, the hit, put it in the trash can, and been like, okay. Yeah, but EA already put so much money into it that they demanded something. Mm-hmm. And I that's- mean, that's kind of how Overwatch kind of started. It was originally supposed to be another MMO from Blizzard. Yeah, but they, right. they cut it down to what worked yeah, and exactly. released a product that was good instead of just like... Yeah, that's that's a mm. that's an example of it doing right where Anthem did it or when did it bad or yeah. when Notch was gonna bring out that one game uh, Scrolls. Well, Notch. Mm. Yeah, Less we I know. talk about Notch, the better. I know, yeah. I know. Right? <laughs> I don't, don't want to give that guy any. There, there's a mine. Time. 
a Minecraft con or some kind of Minecraft anniversary celebration coming up where Microsoft did not invite him to attend. <laughs> Uh, they also the they yeah. also removed his name from the from the credits. Yeah. And they did that a while ago, but yeah, from the, from the well, it was in the newest update too. Yeah. They oh, they was, had yeah. good reason to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It turns out, kind of not a great guy. No, nope. very much not a great guy. But let's not. Yeah, get, we're not going to get into that. Get uh, to proof that. that proof that money doesn't buy you happiness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And that being becoming a s- pseudo celebrity. And having people kind of look into look giving into. giving people some sort of soapbox sometimes not the best thing to happen. Some yeah. people I have mean, bad eye opinions sometimes. Mm-hmm. Once you've worn the fedora, you'll always wear the fedora. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, hey guys, we have a uh, time for one more. So uh, let's let's pick a good one. What do you, what do we think? We got uh, Bloodstained. We got Ghost Rider. We got uh, Earthworm Jim. I kind of want to do this Earthworm Jim thing. Yeah. I don't know if there's a lot of meat on it, but they announced that they're making a new Earthworm Jim game. Okay. And it's for the Intellivision, a new Intellivision. What year is it? Yeah, that's what I said when I read the headline. I'm like, what in the heck is this? Yeah, like they have a, Intellivision hasn't had like a console in like 30 years. 30 years, yeah. And I saw like a mock-up of what it, is gonna look like and it kind of looks like the old console but like assimilated by apple <laughs> and it kind of has like controllers with like screens on them i think i think they're touchpads yeah like, it's really weird it is weird like what are they i mean i understand what they're trying to do they're trying to break into that nostalgia the nostalgia market and also trying to be a PS4, Xbox, Nintendo it, it, competitor. Yeah, they're they're aiming it at families, which says Nintendo competitor. Mm-hmm. But like, they're going to end up the Ouya. Yeah. Yep. Which was a which was a console that mm-hmm. uh, crashed and burned horribly, hideously because it just well, it wasn't very good to begin with. It was with. just and, an Android box. Yeah, basically. basically. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's. I don't know what's weirder having an Intellivision system. Or having a an new Earthworm Jim game. Earthworm Jim game, which I grew up on Earthworm Jim games. They I did fun. too. Yeah, they're good. But... I mean, heck, Toe Jam and Earl got kickstarted. Yeah. If you want to talk about someone who mm. got a, a a soapbox and and started saying some not super great stuff, we could the the creator of the... Earthworm Jim, Doug Tenaple. Doug Tenaple, yeah, is a garbage not, man he's, he's not a great guy no i mean i don't want to repeat much of what no, he's i don't want to repeat what he said either mm-hmm. i i hate... it's out there if you want to look it up yeah. but it's uh, he has some very bad opinions about some very important things and it sucks because yeah. i really liked earthworm jim when i was Same, a kid yeah i love the cartoon yeah Remember the, the cartoon, oh, yeah, the cartoon oh, yeah. is very good very yeah. funny uh-huh so it, it's one of those things where can you Okay, well, first, I'm not going to play this game because it's on the Intellivision. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> but let's say it also comes out on other systems. Is this a situation where you can split the art from the artist, or is this where it informs the 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 creation retroactively so much that it makes it no longer enjoyable? For me, it's the second thing. Yeah, <laughs> I can't look past what it. Well, I mean, I Earthworm Jim isn't good enough to look yeah. over. Doug Tenenfeld's actions. It's mm-hmm. not, I mean, I loved the franchise when I was a kid, but I don't think it's, it's not so good that I can, I can look past gotcha. his transgressions. Yeah. So, so you're saying if it turned out Awada was a garbage human, you would still be able to play Mario? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of the divider but, line. But a little even, bit. even the thought of Awada being, that, that made me a little ill. When yeah, I know. That. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I said it. You know, got to push that envelope a little bit, you know, and push those buttons. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, Earthworm Jim, as fun as it was and it, the game really didn't do anything revolutionary. I mean, it looked very nice. Yeah. I mean, it did a lot for the I'm not, Super Nintendo system. I'm but... not uh, I'm not that nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping when I first read it, I was hoping he was not involved with it. Because they've done stuff with Earthworm Jim with him not involved and it was fine. Yeah. It has a really quirky kind of sense of humor, which I which I enjoy. I love. Yeah. But yeah, he... his involvement is just like totally 
made me disinterested. Yeah, exactly. I would have been interested if he wasn't involved, which is weird because he created it, but <laughs> Yeah. I mean the same thing well not to say the same thing, but it's you would talk about creators and their creations. I mean, you got the guy who made Mighty Number no. Nine, garbage game, but he created Mega Man. Kind of. Kinda. Kinda. He's he was more like in charge of the team that made Mega Man. He he, mm. he was the steward for the franchise for most of its life. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but at least <laughs> at least in that case he wasn't a bad person. Yeah. Person. An objectively that we know bad of. person. That we he know just of. he just made a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, I, I, like different. I said, I, like I said, I wasn't I wasn't trying to make it was like the same situation. This is this is this is like if the creator of Mega Man was also in the clan. <laughs> That's what the situation would be like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe not to that extreme, but it's close, I suppose. But yeah, yeah, I, no, I, I guess I can go with you on that. Sure, <laughs> sure. On that note, on that note, wait, no, wait. We said we were going to give. Uh, opinions of Avengers. Oh. So, Josh, what'd you think? You know what? It was good. Cody. It was great. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great time. See, there we go. We talked about Avengers <laughs> without spoiling it. <laughs> now, yeah, and now you can put it in the description that, that we, we talked, talked about, about Avengers without, without yeah, also, non-spoiler review. Sure. Also, I think the title of this episode should be whatever title of the last episode of Game of Thrones was. The, <laughs> the Long Night. I just want to see. I just want to see. Just want to see what happens. The metric. Sure. You know what? Or like okay. The Battle of Winterfell or okay. something. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. We'll just we'll see we'll see what happens. Hey. Why not? We're putting on a show. What the heck? <laughs> I think the episode was called The Long Night. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and wrap things up. You've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Nerd Overload Now. You can send us emails with your questions and comments, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer opinions to staff at nerdoverload.com. Yep. We have a YouTube channel. Just search Nerd Overload TV on YouTube. We have the show is on different podcast aggregators like uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, that sort of thing. Wherever high quality podcasts are sold. That's well, not sold because are you given know, it, away for free. It is a free, yeah, <laughs> it is a free thing. Let's see, we also have a store. You can go to bit.ly backslash nerd overload T. That's T E E for some shirts. And um, oh, our intro and outro was done by David Pencil. You can find more of his work at davidpencil.com. Hey, you going to be in B Cyrus today? If today is May 4th? <laughs> <laughs> then come check us out at uh, MB Subculture. We're going to have a booth there. Um, mm-hmm. Flyers, pins. Candy. Candy, play my game. Yeah. It's coming out someday. Show up, play a video game, take some candy from strangers. It's going to be a great time. Yeah. Get some free comics too. What the heck? Why not? Play the latest demo build of Believe, the Psychic Paranormal Adventure. <laughs> and see our faces. Yeah. Yeah. Put, the, put a face to the voice. Yeah. Maybe we'll record some stuff. And Maybe. could be on the show. I Who don't knows? Know. We, Anything happened. We haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, we're getting there. No, we got, we got to pretend like fake it till we make it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, putting on a show. All right. Anyway, uh, thank All you. All the again. cast of Firefly will be there. No. no oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> all right. So, again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. It'd be cool if we could put Adam Baldwin in a dunk tank. That would be great. Pizza out. <laughs> This show was sponsored in part by MB Subculture Comics and Costumes.